Thank you so much uh, for your time on the show, uh, Joseph. But quick one, as we're looking at how things are playing out, though, what's your take on how the market has been so far uh, when you look at how the quarter has performed? Thank you for having me. I think what we have to do is put this entire market into a bit of context. I think most importantly, um, we have to remember that there was a massive um, bear run throughout most of Q2 that saw the market dip to as low as minus almost 10 percent so i think you know this has been a more of a positive swing obviously due to the fact that investors are just taking advantage of some of the very very attractive names in the nigerian markets um so any kind of negative performances you see over the next few days or, or have been seeing are mostly down to people who are you know booking profits on their earlier positions and i think overall if the market swung um positive today is mostly just because you know people are still very interested in you know taking positions and continuing to expecting more gains going forward and continuing to um, you know make some moves here and there i think in terms of market activity has been a lot better in the past few weeks the quarter has been a lot more positive than the most positive quarter you know of the year but overall i think definitely more will, will probably see a lot more um, buying from investors, especially local investors, as time goes by. All right, but when you look at uh, the market, especially how it performed last week, you saw that strong gain from the banking sector, about 7.8% uh, week on week uh, last week. Uh, and you look at how things are playing out this week, do you think we could see a repeat of that? Well, it's pretty unlikely that we'll see such big gains again. However, I think if you look at the way investors have been, you know, perceiving the Nigerian market with regards to um, the banking space specifically, it's pretty obvious that they've recognized that the banks have done quite well, you know, in H1, and expectations from analysts is that Q3 will be a positive one, and there will be a bit more of a recovery, and we will see more of that going towards the end of the year, and I think that investors have definitely taken that into account and have paid attention and so they're now going towards you know even banks like Stambic because they are likely to repeat their um, dividend payouts we saw them do even though there was a little bit of a dip at h1 chances are they'll still pay out dividends at the end of the year and so investors are looking forward to that and i think they're just taking positions early All right, we'll be expecting the nine months earnings from uh, players in the market soon. And now I'd like to get what your expectations are and how you think that would impact the markets going forward for the rest of the year. Right, Q3 is likely to be a stronger month, obviously, than Q2. Q2 was where we saw, you know, massive lockdowns across the country, as well as reduced economic activity in general. I think the banks definitely recognized this, which is why they went ahead to we structure about 40% of the total loans. Um, this helps to stem tides in Q2. In Q3, we might see a little bit more of that. However, I think earnings will definitely be higher. Um, interest income will definitely be stronger. And we, although we might not see revaluation gains across all the markets, in all the banks, we will definitely see some in one or two players like your FCMB and your GT, for example. But overall, I think it's definitely going to be a more positive month than the previous, and the nine-month performance is still going to be, of course, to be a little bit stronger than last year.